Bindings make connections between attributes of components and state variables. In AMP, we define a binding by surrounding the name of an attribute with brackets. We set that binding equal to a JavaScript expression, and whenever state variables are updated, these binding expressions are re-evaluated. And then the bound attribute is set to the value of that expression. Let's say we want to control an element's text. We can bind a state variable to its text attribute. In this example, text is the bound attribute of the paragraph tag. It is bound to the state variable message. Therefore, when message changes, the text content of the paragraph tag changes to match the new message. When the button on screen is pressed, the state variable message is set to hello amp. Next, the binding expressions on the page are re-evaluated, and finally, the paragraph tag updates to say hello amp. The text attribute is bindable on any element or component that supports the text content. Other examples of bindable attributes on all components are width, height, hidden, and class. In this example, the attribute hidden is bound to the state variable is hidden. When the page first loads, the paragraph tag is visible. However, when a user clicks the button, the paragraph tag disappears from the screen. Beside the attributes we just discussed, many AMP components also have unique attributes that can be bound to state variables. For example, we can bind the slides property of the AMP carousel component to control the active slide. We can bind the selected property of the AMP selector component to control the selected item. And we can also bind the source property of the AMP image component to change the displayed image. Refer to the AMP bind documentation for a complete list of bindable properties on all AMP components. Bindings are not evaluated when the page first loads. This means that binding expressions are not evaluated until after the first time state variables are updated. In our hello amp example from earlier, the paragraph tag was initially empty. The text only appeared once we clicked the button and set a new message value. So to make sure your components look reasonable on page load, it's really important to include a default value for a bound property. To add a default value to a bound attribute, include the attribute twice, once where the name is surrounded with brackets and once without the brackets. The attribute that's not surrounded with brackets is the default value. When the binding is triggered by changes to relevant state variables, the default value is overridden. In the sample code shown here, the color of the text will be blue when the page first loads. Once the button is pressed, the message class state variable is updated. This changes the value of the class attribute and changes the text to red. So far, to set the value of a bound attribute, we've used basic expressions that directly reference a single state variable. We can also use elaborate expressions to set the value of a bound attribute. Expressions and bindings are a subset of JavaScript. They can contain static values such as numbers or strings, state variables, and a set of allowed JavaScript operations for common JavaScript types like strings, arrays, and objects. The value of a bound attribute is equal to the value returned by evaluating the binding expression. Here are three examples of binding expressions. In the first example, we're changing the value of a class attribute. One class is always applied and the other is conditionally applied. In the second example, we're setting the text of this component to the area of a circle using the radius state variable. And in the final example, we're using one of the allowed JavaScript operators for arrays. The component is hidden if the value is in the list of disallowed values. This sample code shows how to use more complicated binding expressions. This page requires the user to pick a password and then retype that password to confirm the intended value. The error message is hidden by default. It's only when the first password and the second password fields don't match that the paragraph's hidden attribute is set to false, which displays the error message, the passwords don't match. Let's review what we've learned about AMP bindings. Bindings let us change the content of components or the values of attributes whenever the state variables are updated. Bound properties are set to snippets of JavaScript called expressions. Binding expressions may contain one or more state variables, operators, and allowed JavaScript operations. When state variables change in response to user interaction, the binding expressions are re-evaluated. 
The result of these expressions are set as the new values of the bound attributes. Bindings are powerful tools for building dynamic, interactive websites in AMP and beyond. Bindings allow us to split the way we handle user interaction into two distinct problems. First, how user interactions affect state variables. And second, how changes to state variables affect the content or the look of our site. We're able to tackle each problem closest to where it's most relevant. We use the set state action in component event handlers to control the effect of user interaction on our state variables. And we bind expressions containing the state variables to the properties of the components that will be changing. This updates the content and the look of our site as these state variables are updated. This two-part approach to managing user interaction has several advantages. It can reduce errors, it can make it easier to change your components in the future, and it can help others understand your code.